Hey, this is Mike. Thank you so much for choosing this video. Today I'm in Whiteville, North Carolina, visiting Van Underwood Chrysler Jeep Dodge Ram, and I'm checking out a 2021 Jeep Wrangler Unlimited in the Rubicon trim level. Now this has quite a few upgrades, and we'll go over the entire window sticker showing all those upgrades as well later on in the video. This Jeep is sitting on 285-70 BF Goodrich all-terrain tires, wrapped around 17-inch alloy wheels with a matte black finish. It also has four-wheel disc brakes with the ventilated rotors in the front and solid rotors in the back. The name of this color is Billet Silver Metallic. And uh, the FCA brand has used the same color for years now and different uh, like Dodge and Jeep and stuff like that. But it is a fantastic color. It looks really good in contrast with the, the red and black trimmings of the vehicle. So looking here at the front, um, it has a matte black bumper cover here in the front. And you see it has the red recovery hooks, which are really easy to get to They're right, right there on the top. All the exterior lights are powered by LEDs. So the fog lights are a reflector housing and the headlights are a combination of reflector and projector now i have a when jeep redesigned their jeeps um their wranglers i mean i did a night video showing you what the interior and exterior lighting looks like so i'll, I'll leave a link uh, in the description for that so you can see what it looks like and and the, the visibility and all that stuff uh, but it's really fantastic. Jeep did a good job with the LED systems and just, just having all LED lights on the exterior of the vehicle is very sharp and crisp. You can see it from miles away. And uh, it's just a really, really good uh, choice to go ahead and do that upgrade when they did. So here in the center of the grill, I don't know if you notice that, there's a little camera. So right in here is a little front camera. So it's just like the reverse type camera, except for it shows you in front of the vehicle. Uh, so this is handy for if you're uh, trying to avoid obstacles or uh, just you know going through a, a tight trail or something to give you a, a immediate view in front of the vehicle. So looking at the profile here, uh, you can see that the, the fenders are painted body colored here, but they do have a little bit of the uh, durable black plastic around the edge just for, you know, for debris and just protection of the vehicle. You also have a rock rail here at the bottom. So this is a really heavy duty uh, tubular rail uh, that protects the frame of the vehicle. So if there's like protruding rocks or whatever, um, sticking up or anything like that, it doesn't damage the sheet metal in this area. So that's a an actual really heavy duty um, steel bar right there that's mounted. Now the handles are not body colored. They are just a, a black plastic. Same thing with the side mirror, but you do have a top. Uh, now it's a combination top of, uh, from the side, it actually looks like a hard top, but it's actually soft on the top, and I'll show you that in a second. But it is body colored, which gives it that really cool look and that a lot of people are going for. Um, but you do have the real easy to move um, soft top, and I'll show you that in just a second. The very top of the vehicle has a soft top right in the very center, and it's just with a touch of a button that can slide all the way back. And then when you push a button again, it slides all, all the way forward. So it's really handy for getting an open top experience without actually taking the full top off or taking pieces off and trying to store them. So it's really handy, um, you know, to have that Jeep experience in, in an easy way without storing the doors, storing the top and all that cool stuff. Now, if you had a regular soft top, you'd have to unfold it and all that stuff and pull it down. Uh, this, you just get in the vehicle, push one button, and as you take off, it will automatically slide back. Integrating the red color uh, in the Rubicon, I think they do a pretty good job. So right here on the, the label on the side of the hood, Rubicon, but also around the Jeep emblem, is pretty neat. Just a little, they, they could have just made it all solid, but they went ahead and added the, the red there in the background, which is pretty nice. Now you notice it has a traditional mast antenna here. This is what the key looks like, and it's a partial proximity key, and I'll show you that in just a minute. Uh, but it's really big. It's a very large key, has a little bit of weight to it. Um, so you will need to 
take that in consideration as far as lugging this thing around. It looks pretty cool. It also has a flip out physical key if you need that, but typically you won't need it. Um, you can lock and unlock the doors by pushing these buttons, remote start, and then a panic button here. Uh, but you know, you do have to use the buttons to unlock it or use the physical keys. So it doesn't have the proximity system to where you can touch the handle and unlocks it. There's a physical key location here on the driver and passenger side. And so when we lock the doors, just no, there's no sensors or anything on the handle. You do have to lock and unlock it with the key. The heated side mirrors also have this little triangle here, and this is for the blind spot detection system and rear cross traffic alert. So that's the indicator for those features here on the side mirror. Now the inside of the passenger side door, uh, in previous generations, the doors would not have a stopping point. They would have, they would just kind of flop around. But in this generation, it actually has like a normal door, a place to stop here, and a place to stop here. So that way it's not flopping around on you. And it does, you know, have the ability to easily take the, uh, the doors off and all that stuff as well. So the interior door surface, um, it's a soft touch here. It's a very durable material. Uh, it's kind of like a, it's a synthetic type material. And then this is more like a, um, like a vinyl, synthetic vinyl. And then you have the, the red stitching here in a French design. And this is all soft touch. When you get down here, you start having hard touch surfaces and you have this big net pocket there at the bottom. Uh, there's a handle that's enclosed here, so you can use that as a pocket if you like. Uh, there's a portion or place under here to put your hand when you lift the door off of its hinges. It has a metallic handle, door lock controls, but there's no power window controls here on the door and I'll show you where those are in just a second. So there's your, uh, has leather seats with the stitching in them, just like the door. You also have the, it's a manual seat. So if you want to recline the seat or whatever, you just pull the strap and you can see there's some red stitching in that as well. You have the Rubicon name embroidered in the back of the seat, which is nice. The seats are removable, so is the carpet. I don't know if you can see the snap button right here. You can take the seats out, remove this carpet if you'd like, if, you want, if you're really gonna you know, be water fording or whatever with the doors open. Uh, this area can be filled with water and there's drains and they can drain out. So there's your floor mat. And um, you can see this, this area is quite small. So you wanna consider that when you know choosing this vehicle, it's, uh, there's some, compromises as far as you know replacing it say an SUV or whatever with the Jeep Wrangler uh, it's not the it's an off-road vehicle so you want to consider all the different pluses and minuses of that so we have the iconic handle here in front of the passenger seat you also have a handle for entering the vehicle there's a locking glove compartment now there's a couple locking uh, storage compartments in the vehicle and I'll point those out so first you have a small glove compartment smooth plastic on the inside it is locking and check out that nice matte red dashboard looking pretty cool you have the stitching there on the very top so this is a um, this is kind of like a soft grippy material here this is soft as well kind of like a vinyl or leather feeling uh, material here at the top and then this is a hard plastic Now the roll cage, uh, when you take the top off, you do have a painted roll cage. So it's a body colored roll cage. I don't know if you can see that part right there. When you take this off, the inside has some black plastic pieces, but the outside part is the same color as the vehicle. It looks really nice. The front door uh, is quite a bit bigger than the back door, but you can see the nature of the, the size of the opening. 
the back door, even though it's smaller from front to back, the height is the same and it's nice wide open space. So it's not hard to get in and out of the back seat. Um, it's actually not bad at all compared to a lot of vehicles. Of course, the back door is smaller, uh, but we have similar styling back here. It is soft touch here and here, and this is hard touch down there. This is enclosed. This is a handle for lifting the doors off the hinges, and then you have a net pocket at the bottom. And these doors are removable, just like the front doors. All right, the back of both the driver and passenger seats have this molly type webbing on the back for attaching things. Uh, you also have these bag holders and net pockets. And the net pockets are handy because it, it creates tension uh, and holds whatever object that you put in there. So that way, if you're bouncing around on a trail, um, then it kind of in the doors and here in the back, it keeps it in place so it's not rattling around or sloshing around too much. It kind of gives a little bit of attention on it. The back seats are not contoured at all. It's pretty much a flat bench type seat. It has these cup holders and armrests. And uh, just like the front, this is kind of like rubbery, so it's not super hard plastic. Um, it also has little dimples to accommodate for different size cups, and and then that way you can um, you know press it in there so it's not wobbling around so much. This this entire thing comes out, so you can clean it and put it back in, which is a really nice feature. And you have a little place to put stuff here, also here. So if you want to put your cell phone right here or here. You can do that as well. And go ahead and lift that up. And when you put the seat down, you can still use those cup holders, which is pretty cool. So you can see the seat right there with the armrest up. You can have a center passenger if you like. Leg room's really good. Uh, the middle, it's not so good, but it's still not bad. Uh, it does have a hump in the center, and it has this little place to put stuff here, here, it has a 115 volt, 150 watt power supply, um, so like you'd find in your house, a three prong. And then you have two USB charge ports here. This is your power window controls, and there's the rear vents right up there. It has speakers and lights up here. In the roll cage and above that is your soft top now when you fold the seats down so i'm going to go ahead and do that now and go ahead and lift this up and you can fold down when you lift it up the, the headrest automatically folds but you can see there's these two ones one is to fold the headrest and the other one is to fold the seat and the headrest so we lift it up and we can lower it like so. And when we do that, you can see the seat actually goes down as well, the bottom part. So it goes down and kind of gives you as much, goes all the way to the floor. So that way it gives you as much clearance as possible and try to be as level as possible with the, the back cargo area. Uh, now there's still a little bit of an incline, but putting the seat all the way to the floor helps out a lot. And this is where you can use the, uh, the cup holders there when the seat's down. So in case you want to use them, you can use them. That's awesome. The back seats do have l the latch system for car seats, which are really easy to access. And uh, there's no plastic covers to lose or anything like that. So they're just generally easy to use. So looking at the back of the vehicle, um, it does have privacy glass for the, the sides here and the back. Um, the front windows here are not, but you can go ahead and tint that and blend it in if you'd like. Now there is a third brake light here at the top of the spare tire and it's, it, you're able to raise it, raise it and lower it. So if you need a larger spare tire, this can raise up and accommodate for that. And of course you have a full, full size spare tire um, and just completely ready to go. It also has a tire sensor in it as well. So you can keep track of the tire pressure in this tire as well as your four tires on the vehicle. The tail lights are LED and they look fantastic. They're nice and sharp and crisp at night. You can check out my night video if you like. 
These down here are reflectors. So you have these reflectors here and there's an LED tag light as well on this side. And there is a recovery hook. Nice red, easy to get to. There's parking sensors across the back, so you can see one here. It's kind of integrated into that black bumper. And there's a backup camera in the very center of the back, the, the tire back here. So it's integrated well. It's a very durable cover right there. And um, so it's easy to access. You can take this off easy and access the spare tire easy as well. So let's go ahead and swing up in this tailgate. So this tailgate functions just like the other doors, same, same handle. And it's quite heavy with the spare tire on it. So you wanna, you don't wanna just swing it around so much, you know, um, it's good to take your time with this. I mean, you don't have to go super slow. You just gotta be, just be aware that there's extra weight on this than a, just a regular door. It has a little, pretty cool thing right here, talking about different parts of the vehicle wheelbase, water fording capabilities, that kind of stuff. There's also accessories that you can mount right here. It's pretty neat, like a little table that flips down and different things. Uh, Jeep has a ton of accessories you can get for Wranglers. Okay, so this lifts up. So you notice this, uh, this back portion has a rear wiper. It also has a rear wiper washer in it. So that's something you won't get in a soft top. If you have all the seats occupied with passengers, then this is your cargo space. And it's pretty good size. Uh, there's plenty of tie downs there, three on each side. So you can tie down whatever you got in here um, from you know different angles or multiple things. You can even put a net, you know, net tie down on here as well. So you can have a whole bunch of smaller objects or whatever. Here on the left side, you can see there's a 12 volt power supply and you notice it has a little battery indicator there showing you that this actually stays connected to the battery. So even when the vehicle switched off, you can still utilize this power supply, 12 volt power supply. So you notice uh, you can see the outer portion of the, uh, the roll cage here is that same body color. On the right side, check it out. Huge Alpine subwoofer back here. And uh, it's integrated well. Now there's a strap here. Now this is a lockable compartment. So when you have your tailgate closed, this is, it, it goes over this a little bit so you can't access this compartment. Um, so you can lift this up and you have some storage space here. It does have a uh, drain there, so if water gets in it, you can drain it out. You also have a place to put your roof, windshield, and door hinge bolts here. And a little storage compartment there in the center if you'd like to use it. Now this lifts up, so we can lift this up. And underneath is your, indicated by this little, uh, in, this little indicator right here, that there's your jack your jack and your tools will be stored in here. And of course, there's a little bit extra space, so if you wanted to add some more stuff, maybe a first aid kit, that kind of stuff in there as well, that would be nice. Now this thing, when you lift it up, it just basically comes right back down. Um, it, it's kind of, you know, you have to kind of constantly press it. It'd be nice if it had the ability to lock all the way back or something to stay out of your way. Or maybe even a hook to hook this back there or something to get out of your way while you're accessing this area. But it, for right now, it just basically flops down on you and gets in your way. So these seats fold down in a 60-40 split. There's the split right there. You can fold down one seat or the other or both to add to your cargo space while still maintaining passenger space when needed. When closing this, uh, this tailgate, um, it, with all this weight, you don't wanna like swing it and slam it, but it does require a little bit of a 
you know, a firm closure in order to firmly close. So if you just kind of like, it'll just kind of do that. So it's one of those things where you have to know the right balance where you're not overdoing it, um, but you're not underdoing it as well. The fuel door is here on the driver's side and it has this metal cover that opens up and it has a tr traditional cap and tether. And you can kind of like take the cap and just, I guess just lay it down because there's not really a, a good place to hang it or anything like that. To start it up, uh, as long as the key's inside the vehicle, put your foot on the brake, hold it, and push this button. Here's the floorboard in front of the driver's seat. And you can see the snap to remove the carpet right there as well. And there's your, there's your um, floor mat that snaps in place, your accelerator and brake pedal. And there's no real like footrest here to the left side. There's also no release for the, for the hood. You see these vents? here on the upper side of the hood. And you see these bumpers? These bumpers are for the windshield to fold down onto, and you can secure it down on that when you fold down the windshield. And you can see there's a, uh, there's a hinge there. But you notice these, these vents here, and we'll look at the underside of the hood. I'll show you something. Okay, so opening up the hood, uh, there's no latch or anything. You just walk up, and you just pull this down like so and push it down like that and it kind of pops off so this one if it doesn't you just push down on the hood a little bit and it'll release it same thing on the other side so we can go ahead and pull this down like so and then push down on that and that way we can release it like so so we release those two latches on this on the ends there's still one in the very center as a safety catch so it's in the very center, you just reach in, it's easier to do this with two hands, you just reach in, move it to the right, so you can see it right there, and it will allow you to raise the hood. Now the hood's kind of heavy, so it's a steel hood, it does have some weight to it, so you want to keep that in mind. It does require a prop to hold it up. The prop is here and it swings down right there to that where it says prop. So here's the underside of the hood. And you remember those vents on the other side? Um, they look like they go through to some extent, and there is a little bit of space there, but it's covered up with insulation. So if there's any airflow to be had, it's not much at all, if any. It's most likely just for looks. So here's the engine compartment, and it does have a seal across the front and a seal across the back. And it's pretty, pretty, cram packed in here uh, for having a four cylinder. So this has the turbocharged 2.0 liter four cylinder engine uh, and it's paired to an eight speed automatic transmission. It has a hard plastic cover, insulated battery. There's insulation on the firewall back there. To re-secure the hood, of course, you lower the hood, and then right here, um, so obviously we want to keep this all the way down, so that way this can be up as high as possible. And it has a little rubber piece in here, so it kind of grips it to keep it from slipping out, and also keep it from rattling. So we just make sure this is down, so that way that can be as high up as possible. And you just lower the hood, and push it in place. Like that. All right, and then you secure it like so. It's easier to do with two hands. The inside of the driver's side door is just like the other side, except for it has one more control on it, and that is your side mirror control. So you just pick a side and adjust the side mirrors, power side mirrors, which is nice, right there on the door. Both the driver and passenger has has a um, it's a manual seat here on the driver's side as well as the passenger. But the thing about it, the driver's side is has a lot more control. So. The ability to tilt the seat here, recline it, move it forward and back is in the front. That's 
pretty traditional there. And then you have the ability to raise and lower the seat using this handle and it's kind of rubberized grip. Same thing with this knob. So you can lift it up and push it down to raise and lower the seat. And then you have this knob and this is your lumbar adjustment. You can actually see the back of the seat moving in and out. So it's quite a significant adjustment and it's easy to get to. To the left of the steering column, uh, you have your headlight switch, which has automatic headlights on, parking light, and then off. And then this button right here is for your fog lights. Dimmer switch for your interior gauges and your ambient lighting. There's two separate dimmer switches. And then it has a tilt and a telescoping steering column that you lock in place right here. Now this little tiny dashboard has speakers on either side of it. And then it has this storage compartment here in the center part. It's kind of divided up in three parts. This little bump is for your navigation system to get a signal. Sitting in the driver's seat, checking it out, and I have the seat all the way back and all the way down. And I'm six feet tall, and it's still not, I mean, it feels a little bit cramped. So I can touch the pedals fine, but my knee is significantly bent here. So just to give you an idea of what's going on. Um, there's no footrest here on the left side. Um, and I understand why, because if it, if it was a manual transmission, you'd have to have your clutch there, but it, that's kind of an issue for me, not having a footrest. Um, my knee hits there at some point, but over here is okay, because it's open. Um, it's, it's really just the distance between the seat and, you know, and the steering wheel and the pedals is quite a bit forward for my particular taste, but it's not a big deal. I mean, I could drive it and there's no problem. It just might feel a little bit uncomfortable over a long period of time, like a long drive or something. Okay, so leather wrap steering wheel, really nice hand stitching there on the inside in red. And it's like a nice dark red. And the steering wheels, the thickness and the softness is really impressive. I love this steering wheel. It has a really good feel. It doesn't feel like it's gonna cause an issue, you know, driving it. Um, especially if you're on a trail or something and, and you really need to grip the steering wheel and maintain control of the vehicle. Uh, it does have good electronic power steering, so, but still, you know, you want to have a good grip on it. You don't want to dig it into your buns and your hands and stuff. So the steering wheel has a bunch of buttons here on the front that you can see, but on the back, um, if you're not familiar with this, they have a button, up and down button with a center. So it's up and down toggle with a center button. And on the right side, the up and down is your volume for your radio. The center, center button cycles through your audio sources. On the left side, the up and down cycles through, say, your radio stations or your audio tracks, depending on what you're doing, even on your cell phone. And then the center button here on the left side cycles through your presets only on your radio, on your radio stations. Okay, so your cruise control is here on the right side. So you turn it on, you can set here or here, you can change your speed up and down, resume and cancel. So it's pretty straightforward as far as the cruise control. Uh, but I like the fact that you can set here or here. You don't have to do, typically a lot of them just have one set and this is a, um, an increase your speed. You can't set with this one, but this one is either one, which is nice. And it also has some some three-dimensional feel to it. So you can kind of like just put your thumb there and you kind of feel your way around uh, if you don't want to look. Same thing here on this side. So you have these arrow buttons and an OK, which correspond with the screen between the gauges. We'll get to that in just a minute. Your Bluetooth controls are here so you can answer and hang up. Uh, so it's separate buttons for that. And then it has a voice recognition that's very advanced. Um, so Jeep has a the ability to do all kinds of stuff just by using your voice. All right, so windshield wiper controls for your front and rear is here on the right side. Turn signals here as well as your headlight dimmer switch. And here's your gauges. So there's the RPMs here on the left side, your tachometer, as well as what, what uh, four-wheel drive system you're using. Right now it's in two-wheel drive high. You have four-wheel drive high, neutral, and four-wheel drive low. So it just tells you what's going on there. On the right side is your speedometer. and lets you know about what your headlights are doing with that green light. But here in the center port, it has a, a big screen, basically. And you can see right in the middle is your digital speedometer. 
um, what gear you're in, odometers at the bottom, fuel gauge, uh, engine coolant temperature, what direction the vehicle's facing, and outside temperature. So using these buttons here, remember these, we can get more information here. We can change this view and the screen. We can even change the things here on the, on the corners here. We can change a lot about it. It's very customizable. So scrolling down, you can see there's speedometer. And this is the second one. You can see number two, vehicle info. So I'm gonna kind of scroll down more so you can see what I'm talking about. It's part of a menu system. So the very first one is speedometer. So you can choose that if you'd like, but there's other options. Scrolling down, we have vehicle info. Now you'll notice a little green dot. It's showing we can get more information if we go left and right in vehicle info. So tire pressure, there's temperatures and pressures here. Vehicle information. Goes back to the beginning. Um, and it even it shows your spare tire as well. So if you, if you have an issue with your the spare tire temperature, it will give you um, a little indicator there as well. Scrolling down again, this will be your off-road information. So it shows your drivetrain, where the power is going. Scrolling to the right, this will give you your pitch and roll and uh, percentage. Right now we're pretty much level. All right, scrolling down again will be your fuel economy. And you can reset these independently. There's two of them. One shows your current fuel economy, the other one does not. This gives you your average, and it gives you like a bar and your range. Scrolling down again is your trip. So you have two trips, A and B, They're, you can reset those independently as well. It shows your time, your distance, and your average uh, miles per gallon. So you can reset those independently depending on your needs. Um, so this is the status of your stop-start feature. This actually you know, turns the engine off at certain times to save gas is what the claim is. Um, you can turn this off if you want to when you get in the vehicle and I'll show you where the button is. Uh, this is what your radio is doing. Any stored messages will show up here. Uh, you can go into screen setup. So this is where you can change the information here on the screen. Uh, so you can go in here and change different things here. Right. Scrolling down again takes you back to your digital speedometer, and that will be my default screen there. All right, so here's your touch screen, and it's the UConnect system. I like the way these uh, these vents are they articulate. You just reach in there and turn them around. You can close them easy. Uh, this is really easy to uh, to manipulate and aim where you want it. It's a really good design and simple. I like simple. Okay, so speaking of simple, there is a lot of complexity. I mean, there's a lot of features here, but this is relatively simple to use, especially your main features. So, so you have your icons here at the very bottom. They stay there, and then you have um, your information there at the top. It has a clock temperature for your climate control here. So this is what the temperature is set at right now. And then your outside temperature there. So you can see when you, we're in the media. So this is the first icon. It has your presets there at the top, whatever your radio is doing. It could be AM, FM, satellite radio. You can also select your audio source here. You can Bluetooth, USB, auxiliary cable, USB 2. Um, you also have Apple CarPlay and Android Auto capabilities as well. You just have to plug in uh, your, your device for that. You can adjust your audio, you can get traffic and weather. There's lots of different things going on here. The next icon is your climate control. And there's a little bit of redundancy as far as buttons, but out of convenience, and I'll show you that in a minute below. Uh, but you have your temperature for your driver and passenger, where you want the air to blow, um, your fan speed. You can sync the driver and passenger if you want. Um, you can recirculate the air. Your rear, de rear defroster, front defroster is all found here. And there's a shortcut to controls, but we also have this uh, button here. So the controls uh, gives your heated seat, high, medium, low, heated steering wheel, passenger seat, high, medium, and low heated seat. This is where you can view the front camera or the backup camera without putting it in reverse. So let's look at the front camera. All right, so the sun's shining directly in the front, so it's a little bit washed out on camera, but you can see it's a wide view here. 
and um, and you can see both both ways basically and it has these active guidelines so as I turn the steering wheel it'll give me an estimated trajectory of the vehicle where the actual tire tracks are so you can see they look like tire tracks so we can see where the tires go so as we move you know I'm gonna hit that tripod if I put the tire there so anyway so that's a pretty neat feature be able to see all the way around it is distorted and is wide angle but you can see everything in front of you you just gotta you know look at it in relationship to your tires I guess all right we can also look at the backup camera without putting it in reverse we can take a look at it it does also have active guidelines this shows the full width of the vehicle this is not just tire tracks these are full width of the vehicle backing up and where it's gonna go and then that's your center line right there alright so there's your controls you can also access your settings and you turn off your auto dim rearview mirror if you'd like so the next one is apps so there's all kinds of different shortcuts so these these icons at the bottom can repl be replaced with these you just press and hold it and you drag it down there press and hold it and you drag it down and replace the one at the bottom let me turn the heated seat off it's already hot enough okay so projection manager this will be your apple carplay android auto features once you plug your phone in lots of different features here you have off-road pages here this is pretty neat it kind of helps out with if you're off-roading I, I mean it's it helps out a lot it's pretty cool Okay, so there's your drivetrain. Um, you can disconnect your sway bar on this vehicle, so if you need to have more articulation of the suspension system, uh, you can disconnect that sway bar. And uh, it shows you what gear you're in. Steering angle, so as I turn the steering angle, it's gonna let me know what, um, which one, which, which direction it is, and, and it shows me a, like a, a little animation of what direction it is, but then this is the steering angle. So if I want to have put it back in the very center, I can do that. All right, accessory gauges. And then we have a pitch and roll. So we can have the, the same information. Some of it's on this little screen, but this is in the bigger screen. We can have that. Okay, so this next icon is navigation. So we can put in a particular address. Um, or we can just view the map and get our bearings. We can we can pinch zoom and pinch zoom out Where we want to go see where we're at That kind of thing We can change our map view if we want The next is our phone once we paired our phone we'll have access to recent calls um, Phone book and all that stuff. We'll also be able to uh, transfer back our phone transfer it back to actually our cell phones if we're having a private conversation we can do that as well and there's our settings and this is stuff you want to set up with the vehicle when you first get it so that's kind of a quick rundown of what's going on here on the screen um, you have your icons here at the bottom and then you can access different things some of them have shortcuts so like your controls has a shortcut to um, your settings and your climate has a shortcut to controls that kind of stuff and then of course you can swap apps down here so if we want off-road pages down here instead of the phone we can do that so it's really feature rich and relatively easy to use uh, touchscreen all right so we have a physical volume tune through the stations here and these are all rubberized like a rubber grip this is also like a rubbery material here it's really cool and so you're so you have the traditional knobs there the center knob is your fan speed so your climate control stuff is going on here uh, so your front your your driver and passenger temperatures where you want the air to blow your fan speed your automatic setting um, your heated seat controls can be controlled here there's front and rear defroster, so there's a little bit of redundancy as far as the buttons and the screen, but it's just out of convenience, like I said. So your parking sensors can be turned off. Uh, your traction control can be turned off if you need to spin tires. The 
auto stop start feature can be turned off here when you get in the vehicle so it doesn't turn off the engine when you're sitting at a stop sign or a stop light you can quickly mute the radio if you'd like um, and then this is your downhill descent for off-road only you can always turn the screen off as well if you want to turn it off you just tap it to turn it back on all right so here's your um, here in the center is your power windows so you notice they weren't in the door and they go quite quickly in the Wranglers. You do have to hold them to um, to go up, but it is one touch down. And then you you could be able to turn off your your power windows if you want the kids playing with it or whatever. There's the media input, so you have USB-C, regular USB, and auxiliary inputs there. It's covered up in case it rains or something in here. And then you have a 12 volt power supply, supply, and it has a key here indicating that it turns on and off with the key. So the vehicle, uh, when it's turned off this will be turned off as well all right um, so this is for your disconnecting your sway bar you have uh, the ability to lock the front and rear differentials so you can front and rear or your rear only uh, locking and the off-road plus um, there's a little storage compartment right here it has a rubber bottom so you can take that out and clean it and it's just a little tiny spot Here's your four-wheel drive control. So you can lock it as right now it's two-wheel drive high. You can pull it down to four-wheel drive high, neutral, or four-wheel drive low. This is your normal automatic shifter. It has a button on the, this other side, this opposing side here. So you push that in, pull it back, put it in reverse. Two things will happen. The backup camera will pop up. And then your parking sensors will pop up here as well. And it'll, not only will it beep at you if you get close to something, but it'll actually give you a visual indicator on where that object is behind you, whether left, right, or center, and how far away it is. You can, you can always go to your front camera if you need to, or your rear. Pulling it again, we'll go to neutral, and then your drive, and then if you wanted to change the gears manually, it's an eight-speed transmission, so we bump it over here to manual, and this is down, this is up, and you'll know what gear you're in because it'll show here. At any time, you can go back to automatic by putting it to the drive position. The button I was talking about is here, and it's red, so it look, looking pretty cool. So here's the cup holders and it's kind of rubberized. It has these little bumps that compress for different size cups. A little place to put maybe cell phone or just utilize this space for more than just cups. There's also a little bit of uh, amp, uh, lighting under here as well. So it illuminates whatever you put in there, which is pretty neat. It's hard to see during the day, but it is very handy at nighttime. Uh, you should check out my night video. A little storage space right here below the handbrake parking brake here. Okay, so here's your armrest, and it's really soft and pretty good size. I don't know if it's big enough to share with the passenger or not, but you can if you want to. There's some stitching here on the ends, and uh, this lifts up in two positions. So, I don't know if you can see, there's a top, hand, a top switch and a bottom switch. So, the top one opens this up like so. And you have a more shallow uh, compartment here. The bottom one reveals the much deeper compartment. And there's a USB input there as well. And a little bit of a light, which is it's hard to see during the day, but it is welcome at nighttime. And there's places for wires to go in and out of this compartment as well, here and here. And this is a locking compartment. There's the, uh, the keyhole there. So it has an auto dim uh, rear view mirror. And you can turn that feature on or off um, in the screen. Up here is an emergency button, roadside assistance. Now this vehicle has its own cellular connection. So even if you don't have a cell phone with you, you can get roadside assistance. There's your button to uh, move back this, um, this soft top. So you just simply push the button and it starts going back.
push it again, the other side, and it goes, comes back forward. So it's pretty simple, straightforward. And it blocks 100% of the light, so there's no light coming through on you. Okay, so the visor um, is like a, has this really tough vinyl material on the outside. Uh, there's a light and mirror there. These are LEDs, nice and white and clear. There's little clips. You can clip your registration or whatever to it. Um, they do slide out on a metal shaft here. Homelink garage door opener controls on the other side. There's another clip on the other side as well. Basically the same thing on the other side. Okay, so let's look at the visibility in the back. Um, you do have some pillars back there, but generally it's pretty dang good. I mean, looking over my shoulder and everything, it's uh, you can see pretty good. Uh, headrest and passengers and cargo space, maybe you know add some complications or whatever, but it does have the backup camera, the front camera, the blind spot detection system, rear cross traffic alert parking sensors, all that stuff to help you out as well. So I'm laying back here, we'll put the seat back and check, just playing around with these buttons and stuff. I got these LED buttons and interior lights and stuff. And this is in the roll cage. And these speakers, there's actually, I don't know if you can see, there's actually two speakers in each one of these grills. It's a large one and a small one. Okay, so let's look at the window sticker. So here at the top, Shows you the year model, Wrangler Unlimited Rubicon, four-wheel drive. We have a base price and uh, interior and exterior colors. Uh, the engine, transmission, standard equipment starts here. Continues down, interior features. Kind of lists them out. And then your exterior features are here. And then the optional equipment is here. And you can see there's prices now next to things. So some of these packages are quite expensive. All right, leather trim bucket seats, $15.95. Uh, customer preferred package, 22R, cold weather group, um, LED lighting group, uh, the 8.4 inch radio and premium audio group, $18.95. Quite a few ads here, isn't it? And safety group, 8-speed automatic transmission, quality colored fender flares, uh, Sky One Touch power top is $4,000. Comes with other stuff as well. Integrated off-road camera, that's the front camera. Destination charge of $1,500. Then you have a total price of getting close to $60,000. Right, there's the VIN number. Then we have a uh, your fuel economy, safety ratings, where the vehicle's made, different components there. So thank you for watching, and thank you to Van Underwood Chrysler Jeep Dodge Ram here in Whiteville, North Carolina, and I'll see you guys next time.